some time ago, uh, Greylog announced on uh, their blog the version uh, 3.2 and um, what this new version brings for the Greylog users. So over here you can see uh, some kind of link which describes uh, the fact that uh, uh, the views, uh, this one right here, uh, they become the default uh, search. So there is no more views, no more searches. Uh, buttons, dedicated buttons, they are all combined right now and they also uh, give you some kind of enhancements like um, uh, full screen dashboard uh, in case you have like a security operation center and um, you want something for everyone to see on a big monitor um, you can do that right now of course you could have done it in a little bit of a different way by giving the by giving you the possibility to go for the full screen version of a web browser and uh, there are also some uh, alerts and right now we will uh, go down below in details uh, here you can see that uh, the views and search they are all combined and of course you can also uh, create uh, new dashboards and the new dashboards, they are also combined with the search and views. So you can have um, all in one, let's say. And then of course you can save these dashboards and see how, how, how they look like, yeah. Okay, this is for the enterprise version, but uh, as, uh, but because in these videos we are covering only the open source version, we don't really care about the enterprise. Um, they also updated the um, alerts only for the enterprise and yeah new, new full um, screen mode dashboard um, in case you want it <laughs> and over here there are some other uh, changes that they are talking about so let's go into this one and as you can see in uh, they are already at version 3.2.1 which was released on uh, February 4th. If you are running a um, production environment, I would um, honestly advise you to um, upgrade to something like uh, 3.2.3 uh, or later, because usually in the first release, they, you're gonna have some bugs, then they will gonna try to fix those bugs and so on. So just just be sure that you upgrade to something which is uh, stable and what I mean by stable um, to a version which has more fixes so 3.2.3 or later should give you a much more stable environment okay there are some um, other things here added configuration for events and so on you can um, if you are interested um, in them I will give you the link down below in the description and you can investigate it uh, even more. But uh, because I want to keep uh, this video short, I'm gonna move to the upgrading. And on this server we have uh, version uh, 3.1.1 and right now to upgrade we will need to go to this web page where they are giving you the commands and showing you how you can upgrade it. I'm gonna do it like this, RPM and then the rest. So let me go to the CLI. I'm gonna paste this one in here. Then we will gonna do a yum clean all and the installation of Greylock server. And just before we install the latest version of Greylog, I'm gonna go to my um, yam config. And I'm gonna remove Greylog from exclusion. 
the reason why I did this is because when I um, upgrade the, the operating system or patch the operating systems uh, Elasticsearch Mongo database uh, Java and Greylock they will not gonna be touched okay so let's do this Okay, we will hit Y. Okay, it's all good. The new version is installed. And um, let's go and restart the Greylock service. By the way, if you do it in a production environment, not a fun environment or test environment, uh, please make sure that you stop your uh, Greylock server service first. In my case, I didn't do it. It's okay, it will gonna work no matter if I didn't do it. But uh, be sure that if you're running a production environment to stop it first. Okay good let's go back to the web interface okay and here you can already see that uh, the latest version has been installed 3.2.1 and let's go to the search first here as you can see there are some changes compared to the previous one here I have an older version 3.1.3 just to show you guys for uh, comparison and here you can see the search, how it looks, the old classical one, and views, you're going to this type of search, which is similar to this one. So, the search, the streams, and the dashboards, they are all combined right now. You can, you can actually create some dashboards in here. So, um, let's try to do something. Uh, let's go to the fields. Oh, by the way, let's expand this one. Uh, this one is an uh, untitled search, so we haven't done anything here. Uh, this is the description, create, uh, format and highlighting, and fields. So I'm going to go to the source. Uh, let's go for uh, statistics. Okay. Let's select all messages. Um, and here we can see the count score. If we would actually like to see the real source, like the uh, IP address or name, uh, you need to aggregate it. And this is how it looks like. So let's select our uh, ASA firewall. Let's get rid of the counts. And over here, just to have it for fun, uh, let's do another field and let's put in uh, here action. And we can see all the actions that uh, this device took. You can see that uh, there is only teardown and build. So all of all, all this search can be saved. So we can do like um, ASA 
firewall action and we can create a new one right now if I'm gonna go here you can see that my search is saved as as a firewall action this save as uh, with the previous one um, can be exported to a dashboard uh, we can reset the search or export to a CSV file if we want there is actually a new thing in um, Greylock 3.2 it's called the uh, scratch pad this one right here and uh, you can use this one to uh, store some personal notes or other information while interacting with Greylock without leaving your browser window um, for example some IP addresses uh, queries user IDs or something yeah and they are telling you not to use uh, not to store sensitive information such as passwords and so on so let's put something let's put the IP address of our ASA firewall let's close it and right now if we were gonna open it you can see that the information is still in here so it's quite useful uh, if you don't want to just to click and uh, to copy and paste from another document let's go to the dashboard let's go for the Cisco SA firewall and over here for the time um i'm gonna go for all messages and you can uh, quickly see how they changed they are not changed entirely but some of them and of course if you want to use the full screen you can do this and there you go you can have it in full screen the same thing that you were able to do the last time as well and I don't really understand where is the full screen dashboard that Greylock was mentioning I have no idea <laughs> ah okay you have it in here so you need to go on this button click this one full screen uh, refresh interval after how many seconds 10 seconds okay we don't really care about the refresh interval and uh, let's click on save and as you can see the 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 time disappeared so let's do f1 yeah okay we can call this one uh, full screen dashboards okay so let's go back okay cool the time didn't save actually uh, relative all messages okay and right now let's click on save we saved it right let's try to go again to full screen uh, to see if uh, the data is saved or you manually need to go for these ones and uh, set the date so full screen save yes no they don't so my guess is that you need to do it manually okay search in the last 30 minutes search in all messages save let's see if there is some kind of change in here right now and there is so you need to do it manually oh actually there isn't because full screen refresh interval hmm this will this one looks more like a live dashboard interesting okay let's leave it to what it is uh, let's go to the systems configurations nodes logging they are pretty much the same there is nothing changed in here um, Let's go for example to authentication 
and um, create a new user let's call it read the password the same <laughs> uh, roles um, views manager no readers yes uh, because we already have a role configured for readers uh, let's create a user oh, okay there is some kind of things that we need to fill in oh, okay Password is too short. Let's see now. Okay, we are good. Uh, let's see the roles. Uh, readers, they have... Um, let's see what they have access to. Allow reading, allow reading. So that's good. Let's go to... Let's open another window, this one a uh, private window. Okay. Let's use our uh, new created user, read. Reader. And strange enough, we don't have the search button. We cannot actually search for anything. Let's see how we can uh, grant permissions uh, for this user to search for something except uh, uh, going to every stream. Ah, okay. So, there you go. You select one stream. Let's say the Cisco ASA stream. And then if you want to search in another stream, you, you select this one you select this one and so on I would say that it looks good it's not bad you can also create your searches fields it's okay but um, I think they should have given you the possibility to click on search or have some kind of search button not to have this workaround but it is what it is after all it's um, quite a good tool uh, not too bad uh, considering that uh, it's open source if you have any questions uh, drop it in the comments uh, thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe uh, like the video if you liked it share it and talk to you guys in the next one